We return now to North Africa and what recent developments in Mali and Algeria tell us about the terrorist threat in that part of the world. For that, I'm joined by Mary Jane Deeb, Chief of the African and Middle Eastern Division at the Library of Congress. The views she expresses here are her own. And Dirk van der Walle, an Associate Professor of Government at Dartmouth College. Mary Jane Deeb, were you surprised that the Algerians moved as quickly to end this standoff at the gas plant as they did? Not really, because I think they realized that if they didn't move quickly, uh, the hostages could be taken to different parts, not only of Algeria, but uh, outside Algeria as well. They had to act quickly. Uh, they knew that they needed to have the hostages together and free them uh, while they were in one place. It would have been much more difficult had they been spread out and taken by the, by the terrorists. Professor, is this now a regional crisis? Well, in many ways, uh, Jeff, this has been a regional crisis uh, ever since uh, the Libyan regime, the Gaddafi regime, uh, was replaced in Libya. Uh, remember that after the civil war in Libya, we had a kind of a, a power vacuum. Um, and following that power vacuum, uh, the fact that lots of the weapons that the Gaddafi regime had bought had been spread um, throughout the country and um, had been smuggled into neighboring countries. Um, and so in that kind of uh, uh, vacuum that existed came in a number um, of groups, including Islamist groups, uh, that then uh, took this opportunity uh, to really stand up against, uh, particularly as we now know in Mali, uh, but also targeted some of the neighboring uh, regimes, uh, some of the neighboring countries. Um, and so in a sense, it is not only a regional crisis, um, it's really a crisis that involves very closely uh, those outside the region as well, meaning particularly the European Union and the United States, and to some extent, the African Union as well. Why does this, Mary Jane Deeb, immediately implicate the EU? Well, because once you attack the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure which produces uh, oil, gas, and which links Africa to Europe, then you can create havoc in the, in the distribution of, uh, of oil. And, and so it is important. I mean, the French understood the importance of uh, the movement in Mali. They understood that, as uh, Professor Dirk van der Waal was saying, uh, once you have uh, a movement that wants to take over power, it's not simply you know, exploding a car here or there. It is actually taking over power in Mali then similar movements would be uh, allowed to do the same in, in the region. So you buy it that the Algerians under Mukhtar, Bel Mukhtar, are actually acting in sympathy with those in Mali who are trying to Absolutely. topple the government? Absolutely. I have no doubt about it. I have no doubt that the, the more radical Islamists in North Africa and those uh, who are in neighboring countries, including in Nigeria, uh, are in sympathy. So, uh, and this is what the French want to stop, and the Algerian government as well, because Algeria itself is not that stable and could be further destabilized by the actions of the Qaeda. The Professor, matter. are these forces some kind of network, or do they just simply want many of the same things? Well, in many ways, um, these are networks, uh, but the interesting uh, phenomenon is, and I want to add a little bit to what Mary Jean just said, um, is that uh, some of these are Islamist movements, uh, but some of these are also movements that simply uh, paste upon their own uh, a label of being Islamist, and, and some of these are frankly uh, just bandits. Um, and so we see a number um, of movements, both religious and non-religious, that have emerged that in many ways um, have opportunistically taken advantage of the power vacuum that exists uh, within uh, the region. Uh, remember, this is not just in the Sahel, uh, you know, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger. Uh, it also deals in large part with some of the insecurities that remain um, in North Africa. Um, and because of that power vacuum, they've been able uh, to achieve, bolstered, I should say, by what has happened during the Arab Spring in Tunisia, but particularly in Libya, and, and have moved uh, their uh, goals forward, so to speak. But if there's a range of motivations, if some have a political program, and some are, as the professor suggests, simply bandits, does the reaction of other powers in the world change? Does the way the French react, to the way the Algerian government reacts, change, depending on whether they are merely bandits 
or want to do something far more destabilizing? I think what they're reacting to is uh, really the ones who have an objective to overthrow a regime, to take over power. Uh, the bandits just join the, the larger groups. So uh, the bandits are there, they will always be there, but the leaders have a clear goal to take over power, to create an Islamist state in Mali, and then move further to Niger, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, Senegal, and the other countries. And certainly, Algeria is uh, also on their map. Professor, what are the challenges involved? We're talking about a huge swath of land, sparsely populated. Uh, if you want to have a military response, if you want to respond to this kind of uh, irregular action in the field, is this a daunting landscape on which to do it? It is a very daunting landscape, Ray, um, and it will undoubtedly take many years before all of this is solved. The coordination uh, between the different partners involved in this, the European Union, the United States, uh, the African Union, to some extent peripherally the Arab League, um, will be uh, difficult. In addition to that, it also relies on the cooperation of the local states. Now, luckily, uh, Libya in particular, the leadership in Libya, um, has moved forward and has been trying to coordinate already all kinds of security arrangements in North Africa. But then North Africa needs to coordinate with the states in the Sahel, with the African Union, um, with the United States, with the European Union. And there are lots of uh, sensitivities here. Um, undoubtedly, the United States will want to play uh, a larger role eventually, uh, but that involves perhaps the Africa Command, which is now located in Stuttgart, uh, and out of sensitivity to some of African concerns. Um, and the Europeans also have all kinds of reasons why they need to be sensitive, for example, in Algeria, because Algeria has this long history um, of relations, somewhat antagonistic relations um, with the West, but particularly with France. So it will be very difficult to coordinate, uh, but already we're starting to see that uh, some measures have been taken, um, and undoubtedly that that cooperation will willy-nilly um, have to be established if indeed that part of the world does not become um, highly destabilized and remain destabilized for a long period of time. Dirk Vanderwaller, Mary Jane Deeb, thank you both.